did you have to go? Why did you leave this world? I'm standing all alone. You were my everything, mama. You gave me everything, mama. You were my special gift. Now I lost everything, mama. I don't know what to do. I think I lost my mind. No, no, this can't be true. Please turn back the hands of time. Come on, resuscitate. Come on, let's negotiate. Just please come back to me. Come on, don't die, just wait. I'm begging, please wake up. I'm begging, don't give up. Can you hear my voice? I'm begging, begging, mom, wake up. Please, please, please don't be selfish. Please, please don't leave me helpless. Oh God, I'm begging, begging. Please, please don't leave me soulless. If so, just take me to Got nothing left to do You took the best of me And now my life is over too And my body's numb Didn't think that I'd be the one Forced into a life of darkness Never again to see the sun Trapped inside all this pain Left standing in the rain Cause in this game a life I learned that life's not really a game I'm in the chapel looking at you You're lying in the coffin, is it really you? I feel a bit lost and a bit confused And I'm holding in tears just to make it through uh. For my ministry It's hard to see What you can see You're living with God Up in the heavenly I just really thought You'd be here with me And now I have A little bit of clarity See Uh You got your healing now Yeah Uh You the strongest now Uh Yeah You up in paradise And knowing where you're at Brings me calmness now Yeah Uh You fought the good fight mama Yeah You won the war Uh you finished the race, so don't suffer no more. Walk through those gates, receive your reward. You on them streets of gold, yeah. That's what I'm aiming for, mama. Just to see you again, just to hold you close. I'll keep your memory alive, and I'll never let go. Just pray for me, mama, yeah Just pray for me, mama Will you pray for me, mama? I miss you praying for me, mama Just pray for me, yeah Can you pray for me, uh Just pray for me, mama I really miss you praying for me, uh Mama, I really miss you so much So much
thank you so much for um, watching this video and supporting the music, the ministry, and everything that we're doing. Uh, this song is very, very near and dear to my heart. Very, um, man, just, it just means so much to me, and I'm really grateful that you guys um, checked it out. So if you made it this far, thank you. Um, the, the, the whole point of the song, there's so many things I want to talk about in the song, but... Uh, let me just get to like the main point. So the main point, the main reason for the song is I wanted to honor my mom, number one. Um, she was definitely a woman of God who raised me to know and love the Lord. And that's why I am who I am today. And it ha if it had not been for her, I would still be in the streets, up to no good, you know what I'm saying? Robbing you probably, but I thank God that, that through her faithfulness and through her prayer, we're here today and we're able to like stand before you. Um, with love and God inside of us, one. Number two, I wanted people to understand that it hurts when you lose somebody, right? Like, it really hurts deep down in the core, in your core. Like, it's one thing to lose a best friend. It's one thing to even lose an aunt or uncle. Like, yeah, they, that hurts. But when you lose, like, the closest person in your life, like your mom, that that really, really hurts. And it, it, it hurt me so bad. And it still hurts sometimes, I'm not going to lie, but I wanted people to see that it's okay to hurt. It's okay to um, feel the way you feel. Um, one of the main things I want people to take away from this song is to understand that God has a plan in everything he does. You know what I'm saying? There's always this stigma or there's always this question like, why do bad things happen to good people? Or if God was love and God was real, how can he let this happen to this situation? Or why did he let that situation happen? Or whatever the case may be, I don't have all the answers, but here's what I do know when it comes to my mom. He took my mom, right? God took me, he, and I know it was God that took my mom because my mom was sick with all kinds of things, liver, lungs, Heart. I mean, oh my God, my mother had uh, so many situ bags of medication. My mom had a trach in her throat so she could get oxygen. Um, she literally carried oxygen tanks with her everywhere she went. She was on a wheelchair. My mom, pretty much anything you could think of, I think my mom had it. And she didn't die from any of that. She didn't pass away from any of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so I know it was God. I know... She was preparing me from a long time, like telling me every time I went to her house, I would get mad because she would say, Mijo, give me that box from the closet and I would get it. Well, what's in the box, mom? Well, these are the insurance papers for when I die. This is where you're going to bury me. We already picked out the plot and we already did this. And I would get so angry and I would throw the box and leave. And um, she would get mad at me for disrespecting her like that. But I'd be like, no, nah, mom, I don't. And I wouldn't go to her house for like a month and then she would call me back, mijo, bring me a taco, I wanna talk to you. <laughs> so I would go to her house and somewhere in the conversation she would bring it up. And that box, mijo, is cause your name is on there and you're gonna have to sign papers. And I'm like, mom, what are you talking about death for? Get out of here and I would get mad and I would leave. So I knew she knew, it's like she was preparing us. And, and when I talk to people about how my mom passed and other people who have lost close loved ones, um, they say a lot of the same things like like it's like they knew they were preparing themselves and they're trying to prepare us the kids uh, About them leaving earth, you know, what I'm saying like they, they were going home and they knew it and they were ready for it and um, They were happy for it and we're the ones not ready and not happy, you know, what I'm saying and So I wanted people to understand that that God has a plan, you know, what I'm saying so People would prophesy to my mom and say hey God said he was gonna heal you and God said he was gonna get you out of that wheelchair and then I knew scripture, the word of God says that by the stripes on the back of Jesus, we're healed from our sicknesses and diseases and all that mess. So I said, okay, well, by God's word, he's got to heal my mom. By God's word and by the prophecies that everyone tells you that he's going to heal her, she's going to be healed. So when she passed away, I was like, what is going on? I couldn't understand it. I, I didn't get it. I was like, what? What is going on here, right? So before I tell you what gave me peace with that, let me say this, my mom actually passed away two times before she actually passed away. And when I say two times, I don't mean like that same day they tried to revive her and she came back. No, no, I'm talking two different times, two different years. Um, I remember the first time I was, uh, I was just, uh, got, I was minding my business, I got a call and they said, hey, we're here at the Southwest General Hospital. They're on the South side. And, 
talking about, hey, your mom, she just passed away. And I was like down the street and I was with one of my homeboys, another strong man of God, and we showed up. And, and they didn't want to let us in. I said, nah, nah, you gotta let us in. You gotta let me in. I gotta have a minute with my mom before you take her, take her away. They let me in and I looked at my homeboy. I said, I said, you down, bro? You, you, let's see if this stuff is real, you know? Cause you hear, you hear of all, you know, these stories, then you read in the word of God where Jesus, you know, brought Lazarus back uh, from the dead and uh, stuff like that. And so I was like, all right. So I remember we prayed and we're like, this woman shall not die, but she shall live. We started quoting scripture. We started praying. We got loud in there. They were looking at us crazy. And sure enough, it was weird. Just like in the movie, she like, <gasps> she got her breath back. And you see the machine, ding, ding, ding. like her heartbeat came back. And it was so crazy, man. Like, we're like, whoa, this stuff really works. Like, we, we, we were like so excited. You know, one, because my mom came back to life. And two, the word of God is real. You can bring the dead back to life. And so we're like, no way, this is crazy. You know, and then like a few years later, they, they call me, hey, uh, they can't keep your mom's uh, heartbeat up. They're, they're, they're losing her. And I remember I rushed over there. By the time I got there, they were already rolling into the back. We started praying from right there. In the name of Jesus, this woman shall not die, but she shall live. And, you know, we're quoting scripture and we're praying in the name of Jesus. And it was funny because the the lady that was pushing her to the ice box, well, they had my mother covered with a sheet, right? And so my mom was always been claustrophobic. So that sheet over her face, when she woke up, scared her. And she started screaming like, take this sheet off my face. Keep that mess, keep that mess. She started screaming and she scared the lady so bad. The lady literally peed on herself. And uh, it was kind of funny, but okay. We like, we knew, okay, this is real. God honors his word. He, gonna, he brought her back, you know, this is twice already. So this this time when she actually passed away it was like yo what's going on well it's crazy because that day we were doing a big event at our church right we, we like to reach out to the community every once in a while and we, we had we put some chairs out in the parking lot we, we had a special guest speaker we did some music ourselves on um, the people that came to receive god and uh, people got saved that night it was beautiful and um that night um, when i turned on my phone after the event because I always had a custom to you turn off your phone when you in church you turn off your phone when you're doing something for God like I know today everyone got their phone out in church and in the services and they live streaming and all that I don't like that man leave that to the media people when you in church turn off your phone you know what I'm saying give reverence to God receive the word you can't be receiving if you're here trying to live and all you know like and so I always just had a custom you just turn off your phone and, and you respect the house of God and you gotta receive the word of God and uh, so when I turned on my phone after the event was done, after we folded up chairs and put the sound system inside, I see all these voicemails, all these alerts, bing, 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 right? And um, I remember listening to them, and the first one was like, my brother, hey, carnal, give me a call when you have a chance. And I was like, okay. And then my other brother, hey, carnalito, what's up, bro? You're not answering your phone. Give me a call. Hurry up. Call us. It's important. I'm like, what in the world? And my sister. Mijo, call me, mijo, what's going on? And then, like, all these voicemails, all the way down, all the way down. And the last voicemail was my dad. And my dad was like, hey, I didn't want to tell you on the phone, pero tu mamá falleció. And, uh, which means, like, yeah, I didn't want to tell you on the phone, but your mom, she passed away. She's dead. We're here at the, at the Baptist Hospital downtown. And everyone's just waiting for you, like, you're the only one that's not here. And when I heard that voicemail, I, um, I dropped my phone and uh, my wife was in front of me and she says, um, she said, what happened? I said, I said, my mom died. And it just felt different this time. It, it didn't feel like the calls the past two times. It felt like, like it really felt real. Like, like, I don't know, it's crazy. It just felt different. And I felt like, okay, this ain't gonna be like, you know, where we can just pray for her. I don't know, it just felt different. And I started running to my car and, uh, my wife went with me and we left the kids to my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was like, no, y'all go, I got the kids. And we, we took off, we got there. And, you know, I get there and all my family's there. It felt like a movie, like everybody was posted up against the wall all the way into the room. I, I get in the room and um, my mom's laying there. She like, she was just sleeping, like she was just chilling. And, and I hold her hand, I start caressing her head. And, um, and I tell her, mom, it's okay, you can wake up now. You can wake up now, I'm here, you can wake up now. And um, she wouldn't wake up, she wouldn't wake up, and I'm like, 
And I wanted to do the same thing I did before, you know, where you pray, this woman shall not die, she shall live. But it's like I knew inside, like, okay, that's not going to work this time. Like, I knew. I, I just knew. And like, mom, it's okay. You can wake up. You can wake up. I'm looking at her, whispering in her ear. I gave her a kiss. And so, holding her hand. My uncles were, my uncle and my aunt were in there. My brothers and sisters were in there. My dad was in there. My wife. And um, I was just like, dude, what? And, they, and so they took her and I was like, okay. I remember being at the, um, you know, at the, at the funeral, at the viewing of the body. And I'm looking at her in the casket like, man, is this really you, mom? Like, this ain't you. Like, I was so in doubt. Like, this ain't you. Just, you know, but I knew. I knew it was her. And, and I just remember uh, I wanted to honor her. And so... When she was alive, I had I wrote her a song, and I would do the song everywhere, <laughs> everywhere all around the U.S. Um, for all the mothers to encourage them, because I know a lot of mothers have like these knucklehead kids in and out of prison on the street, up to no good, and they they've lost hope. and And that was me. That was I was that crazy kid, right? And my mom, she was a warrior for God, in a wheelchair and everything. So I'll tell all the moms like, hey. I know your kids, they knuckleheads, but I would try to always encourage them and say, hey, don't worry about the baggy clothes. Don't worry about the, the tattoos and the, the crazy hairstyles they're doing nowadays and the way they talk, the music they listen to. Don't even worry about that. Um, what's going to happen is God's going to use that for his glory if you remain faithful. So I always did this song all around the U.S. called A True Mother, and I, and I would do that to honor my mom, thanking her for, for putting up with me and all the mess I put her through. To get me to where I am today. So, um, yeah, mom. One thing I love about my mom is that um, when I when I would get home at two in the morning, I, and I keep in mind I'm 11 years old, 12 years old, and I would sneak out with my older brother. You know what I'm saying? And when I, we would get back, like my dad was like trying to call the cops, and my dad was trying to fight with us, and you know what I'm saying? Like it was crazy. But my mom, yeah, she would get after us, but it was a different you knew it came from her heart you know what i'm saying i felt like my dad was fighting from a place of inconvenience as opposed to my mom coming from a place of love like like me we really don't want nothing bad to happen to you you know what i'm saying but i would get home two in the morning and my mom was would kiss me on my cheek and um she would look to, to the heavens and say thank you god for bringing my baby home and then she would go to sleep so while i was out partying she was up praying and I always knew that every time it, it came from love. And so, mothers, that, there's a secret right there. There's a tip. Pray for your kids. Don't stop praying for them. Whatever they're doing, don't even worry about it. Just keep praying for them and be faithful to God. And look, I'm 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 result of that. I'm the fruit of that. I'm I'm an example. Or my mom's the example of her faithfulness to God. And now look what it produced. Uh, someone who turned their life over to God. So check this out. Another crazy thing um, that came to be from this song was. Like, my mom passed away, right? Like, three weeks before we were supposed to do a uh, a three-month tour. Three weeks before a three-month tour. Crazy, right? My mom passes away. A week later, we bury her, right? Like, we bury my mom. And then my mom used to live in Dallas, out there in that area. And, and a lot of people knew my mom. Like, so many people. My mom did so much for the community. My mom was, she was a warrior for God, man. She impacted so many people that the city of Dallas, uh, people out there in, in the city, pastors and stuff, they had their own like uh, ceremony commemorating her life and honoring my mother. And a lot of them came down to the funeral here in San Antonio when we buried her here and they wanted me to go to Dallas with them, um, to Louisville, Dallas and all that, to, um, to be there present, you know, in honor of my mom. And so I couldn't say no to that, that's my mom, you know what I mean? And, and I love those people. and, and They've been in my life too since I was young. So um, we bury my mom three weeks before um, the event. I'm sorry, we bury my mom died three weeks before the event. So a week later we bury her. The following week I'm in Dallas and I come back and then we take off on a three month tour. And and people are like, you still gonna go and you can't go. And you know what I'm saying? Like you just lost your mom and this and that. But you know what? I was like, you know what? My mom gave her life to try to get me right with God. Like she invested into me to be this this warrior that could win souls for the kingdom. More so for me to be right with God. She didn't want me to suffer, but she also knew 
the qualities that I had, you know, as a leader, as someone that you that knows how to unite people and, and lead people and, and into God's glory. Because I did that in the street, you know what I'm saying? I was the leader of my little clique, you know what I'm saying? So um, I knew that my mom also knew on the flip side that, that winning souls would be the best thing, encouraging people. And, um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to throw that away. My mom passed away and she had hurt. So what better way to honor her than to keep going on this tour? Because if I stay, well, all these people aren't going to hear the gospel through my ministry that we're going to hear it. You feel me? So I said, nah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to honor my mom and I'm going to keep winning, winning souls and I'm going to keep loving people and I'm going to I'm gonna keep showing people, you know, what God's done in my life and I'm going to honor my mom. So I was on this tour, man, and, and I would always still do the mom song, the true mother song that I wrote for my mom because I still needed to encourage other mothers. Like, don't give up on the kids. Don't give up on us. We the future and we need your prayers and we need your faithfulness to God. Like, moms, keep loving us. Keep loving us. You know what I'm saying? And so... Um, man, it was it was a definitely a difficult tour, but we we did it, man. And I was surrounded by great people who loved me and kept me in prayer. And um, and so yeah, um, that tour was very successful. Anyways, back to the video, man. I'm getting carried away. I'm sorry. Uh, I hope some of these words encourage you guys and help you guys. But back to the video shoot. So you know, I wrote that song tons of times, and I and I trashed it, and I made beats to it. I made all kinds of music for it, and then I trashed that and. I don't know, I, I just, I was, there was so many things I was putting out on the song that I was like, you know what, I can't really be saying that stuff um, uh, on the song, and, and I, I'm going too far with my feelings, and so back and forth, so finally, um, um, we finessed it, so uh, with Three Cross Records, um, you know, they gave me a, a beat, uh, which by the way, my nephew is, is actually the one who, 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 the head spear of the whole label. He gave me this beat, man, and the, the music. Ah, I said, dude, this is the track. This is what I need for the mom song. And so I took the song I already had. I slapped it on that track, but I tweaked it and I did different things. And I said, man, this is it. I was waiting for the right track, everything to line up for me to release this song. Because I knew I had to. Um, it took me a while, but I knew I had to. And so this is it. You know what I'm saying? I... Uh, I, uh, we recorded it, <clears throat> and the crazy thing is, like, I mean, you look at the video, I'm in a cemetery, so I wasn't just going to show up at a cemetery, you know what I'm saying, like, I wanted to get permission and stuff, can you imagine what that's like, going to a uh, cemetery, trying to get permission to shoot a music video there, that is the weirdest thing I've ever asked for, and it was so embarrassing, because I drive in, and they just so happen to be, like, some ushers standing outside stopping the cars um, to tell them where to park and the guy was like what family are you with and I'm like man I'm not here for the funeral I'm just here to speak to management or something he's like well what do you need so then I had to tell him the story look we're shooting a music video and we're trying to get permission to, to shoot footage here in the cemetery and he was like huh and I was like yeah I know or he says well go park over there and go inside and so then I go inside and then I have to tell the lady hi I'm looking for management and he said, okay, well, what do you need them for? And I was like, I had to tell her the story. And she was like, huh, what, seriously? And it was just crazy. Then uh, she called another lady, like, hey, come here. Tell me what you need. And I was like, I just needed permission to shoot footage here on the cemetery, you know what I'm saying, for the music video for my mom. And she was like, what? She was like, you know what, come over here to this office. So she took me to some office. She left me in there by myself. I'm waiting and waiting like for like five, 10 minutes for like the main manager to come or the owner or whatever. Imagine those thoughts that were going through my head like all these people think I'm crazy. Um, so then um, I'm in there and the manager finally comes and he's like, yeah man, go ahead. Do, do what you gotta do. And he was really excited. He's like, you know what? Send me a copy of the video when you're done. So uh, that was crazy. But God gave us favor and, and we shot it. Crazy thing is, <laughs> that morning it started raining really hard. Like, dude, we're texting y'all, we canceling the shoot. And I was like, in all these years of music ministry, I ain't never canceled an event. I ain't gonna start canceling a video shoot, shoot whatever. And uh, and actually, I wanted the rain. I, I was like, you know what? We're supposed to shoot. I think we're supposed to meet up at like 10 or 11 o'clock, something like that. And I woke up, it was like seven in the morning and it was raining hard. 
So I was like, you know what? I I got my kids up and we all got up and we started loading all the gear because I want I wanted to shoot footage in the rain. I thought it would have just looked epic. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, this would be crazy good visuals, but. And by the time we got there, it all cleared up, and I was like, okay, I thank you, God. I see what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing, but I want it to rain, but okay. But uh, I guess it's better that we didn't get our equipment wet and all, and all that stuff. So anyways, guys, um, I really hope you guys are blessed by this video. Um, again, let me just recap. I really want you to understand that I made this video to honor my mom. I love her. I still miss her, um, and I just wanted to honor her. And then, too... Uh, to let you guys know it's okay to have those feelings and go through those emotions and and that hurt and those questions but know that god has a perfect plan um he, he doesn't he doesn't get scared when you want to talk to him about something when you have questions he welcomes you he says come as you are so you know what i'm saying if you're hurt come with your hurt you got this pain bitterness god says come you ain't gonna scare me i got you let's talk about it you know what i'm saying um, and talking to God is the best thing because it, it gave me results. I can only talk about what gives me results, right? Word of mouth is the best form of advertisement. So I'm not going to talk about something that didn't work for me. Because if I do, then that product's no good. But I'm talking about a, a great product, the best product. You know what I'm saying? Talk to God. You'll get results. Um, you'll get comfort. He'll help you through it um, and help you understand. He helped me understand. He did it for me. I don't see why he wouldn't do it for you. Word of God says he don't respect. He's no respecter of persons. Um, he loves us all equally. He just rewards us differently. So the harder you go for the kingdom, the bigger the reward. Just like at work, right? The more hours you work, the more overtime, the bigger the check. Same thing. Um, God loves us all equally. And um, the reward is just different based on your work. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even true sometimes. Just sometimes people get the same wages and they ain't even been there a long time. It's in the Bible. There's stories. You know what I'm saying? About a farmer. But uh, no, nah, man, guys, I really hope you're blessed. Um, do me a favor, man. Please uh, share this video. Um, with people that you know need it, you know what I'm saying? Um, subscribe to the YouTube, like our page, share it on Facebook, everything, man. All that helps us. Um, we're really trying to uh, put out content that's going to bless you guys. And we're just trying to be real with it, man. We ain't trying to fake it. We ain't trying to act like it's all together. We've been real, as you can see by these songs we've been putting out. So, guys, we love you. Keep us in your prayer. Pray, pray, pray for us. Please pray for us. We need your prayers. We love you. We thank you. I'm your boy, Brother C-Flow. Peace. God bless you.